For years, he was an informant spilling the secrets of the Chicago mob to the FBI. The story of Red Wimet. I was told by some people at the time they put out a million dollar contract on my head. Hello, folks. It's Red We Met, and here we are, Monday. <laughs> and Monday on uh, May 2nd, 2022. How you doing, Bill? Bill Kirschmeyer. It's hot in Vegas? Yeah, it is. It's hot here, too. Bobby Bag of Donuts, how you doing? Scott H., how you doing, buddy? I'm here, so I'm doing fine. John O., how you doing, buddy? Brian, I missed you, but I didn't miss you. How are you folks doing? Well, as you can see, I can talk. I got my voice back. <laughs> greetings, greetings. Good to see you, guy. 67 Vlad. Scott H., it's the same here. It's about 85 degrees here. Sunny and 85. Bobby Bag of Donuts, you want to say hi to everybody? We say hi to them. Okay. Another Monday with Red. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Well, we'll see what's up. Catherine, you asked how I'm feeling? I'm feeling fine. I really am. I don't know how I sound, but I feel good. I did a podcast last night, folks. It was with uh, uh, Hollywood Wade. And uh, Chip is a nice guy. He's in South Carolina. But he wanted to have me on his show with uh, a guy by the name of Chuck Maselli. And uh, I was on his show. I guess he's going to release it. Uh, it's not live. It's going to be released Thursday. So that'll be after Redness Day. Sean Pender. Good afternoon to you, sir. Well, it's glad to be back, Scott. There we go. Crime and entertainment. <laughs> yes, I just mentioned uh, your show. Chip, I, I think you, you said you were going to release that video uh, Thursday and just let the people know. Okay, buddy. Thursday, you're going to drop it in. That's good. We'll be looking for it. I'm doing good, buddy. Happy Monday to you. You're welcome. You're welcome, Wayne. Anytime, buddy. William, uh, Bill Kirschmeyer, I thought you planned the term Grand Ogden might help Mondays as the Grand Ogden guys, gals, moniker. It might. I don't know, Bill. <coughs> Still got a little bit of cough. <clears throat> Did I hear about the remains found? Uh, uh, Bob, Sir Fun Effect. 
Uh, hey, Brett, did you hear about the remains found in a barrel out in Lake out Mead outside Las Vegas? No, I did not hear that. I did not hear it at all. Hi, Pam. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Well, a week at least. At least. Last read this day. Good to see you here. Another Roselli summary for <laughs> Anthony. You are you are something very neat. I don't know how many people noticed or not, but on the twenty fifth of uh, last month, uh, Dr. Pat Spalaccio, Tony Spalaccio's older brother, Pat, passed away at eighty five years of age. I didn't know if everybody's known that or not. Yes, Duchess as well. She's munching on her food right now. <laughs> Catherine. You know, that's what they tell me. Lake Mead is getting uh, pretty low. And it, it, it's classified as a pond now. It's, it's getting bad out there. Pam. Yeah, I saw you last Wednesday. I did. I said hi. Yes, so did Adam. It's on tape. It's on video. It's out there. I assume you're talking about Pat. Pat Splasho. Bob. Really? I didn't know that. He was your first dentist, TC. That's interesting. Uh, no, I didn't know any of the people from Zadie's. I never went in there. Never went in there at all. Now, that's interesting, Bill. There's a B-29 Super Fortress bomber that ditched in Lake Mead in the late 40s. I didn't know that either. But I don't know that much about Lake Mead. I really don't. Bill? Bill Kirschmeyer. <laughs> Pat worked on teats. Teats. Okay, gotcha. So, how's everybody doing today? I'm chipper. I may have a little bit of a congestional cough, but I'm smoking them away just like I used to. TC, uh, which is on uh, which Wells Street establishments did you run? Um, I owned and operated. Chicago's Old Town video, which was brought up in the uh, Family Secrets trial as the Peeping Tom. And I also owned the place next door called the Glory Hole. And I had some other real estate on the on, on Well Street that I rented. It was rentals. Hope that answers your question, buddy. It seems like our show is going to be about Lake Mead. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to run out of water in Las Vegas within the last next year. Unless you catch a lot of rain. And that's going to mean a lot of flooding. Spirit of Justice. Did I ever hang out in the patch? You, I certainly did, Spirit of Justice. Um, I used to... Uh, most of the time I'd be at Jimmy Cozo's place, the compound. Sometimes I go to the bakery or something like that, but generally speaking, that's where I went. You know, Pam, I agree. It's time for you to get out of town. It's certainly had a lot to do with me deciding not to move out there. 
for a lot of reasons. What does glory hole mean? Chicago Joe. Well, what it used to mean to me until I found out I was educated by Mike Byrne was uh, from the outfit past and present news on uh, uh, cur current past and present news on uh, Facebook. What it used to mean to me was you hit gold, you're gold digging, and you hit gold and you had a glory hole. Now I find out that it's something that it's a hole between uh, <laughs> a divider. There's a divider and then there's a hole in it. And uh, I don't know if I want to say the, the definition of that right now. But the place was different. It had uh, gold mining pans up. It had horse collars in it. Kind of a Western motif. And I never thought about it like that at all. You're welcome, Joe. You think it's a hole in the bathroom? Well, it could be. Vegas is a bad place to move to. I believe it is right now. It's going to get to the point where people are going to start moving out of it. It's getting too congested. <laughs> Genetic Memory Farms. So what else was on the Chicago Heights crew in the 50s? We know La Piatra was the head then in the 50s. Thin Man, Curry, Ran Joliet. You know, I don't know, guys, because I'm not a mob historian. I mean, I really, I really didn't go for that uh, too much. Cindy Workman, how you doing? Yeah, you hear my puppy in the background. Thank you so much for stopping by. Pam Rudnick, it was not like it was in 1970. Read too many people out. Yes, and they're on top of each other. I agree. Yes, I did. I, um, Doc, I never knew. We just called him Doc out in Willow Springs. The two two gun toting uh, wild man, he was something else. When did I meet him, or where did I meet him? I met him in Willow Springs, uh, and this was in nineteen sixty eight or sixty nine. I forget. Ricky Delta, who else was on the tapes in your films, Red? Outfit guys, all of them outfit guys. The only people I tape are outfit guys. Uh, Louis Ebley. Um, let's see. Tony Didino and various other people. I hope that answers your question, Ricky. Okay. John Diddler. Ditter. I, am I saying that right? Diddy, Diddy, Diddy Air. I'm just going to call you John, okay, buddy? Uh, did I have any juice with the Chicago PD? Yes, I did. Uh, was I able to get uh, a friend out of trouble because you he, you knew he did something in the department? Uh, were you ever able to get, get a friend out of trouble because you knew someone in the department um generally if i saw something go down on the street and there was an officer involved and i got myself involved and it wasn't a really serious crime uh the officer would probably let me talk to the person and that was it generally speaking that was in the 18th district those guys i was out there saving their lives every day <laughs> I, I, I was their friend, and they were my they were my friends.
I'm trying to get up. Uh, Cindy, I would say uh, it's not a bad place to live. It's just some of the some of the issues that are going around the area right now are kind of tough. They really are. The water shortages, the crowds, the people. It's it's not exactly what I want to do. Not me personally. But then again, there's probably three, four million people that want to be there. So they will be. Sean Pender, Willow Springs, new chief of police is Gary McCarthy. Well, you know, I don't know Gary and I haven't been out there in years. So I really wouldn't know what it's like, but I, I hope it all works out. And I hope it's a, it's a lot better than what it was when I was out there. Alan. Alan, I'm having a hard time with your last name. Uh, Gemini, I can't pronounce your last name, buddy. Am I going to? I don't even know what the name is, so I can I can guarantee you I'm not going someplace I can't even pronounce. Okay, buddy. I'm reading your comments as I'm going along here. Jew Man Jai. Jew Man Jai. Thank you, Joe. It's pronounced Jew Man Jai. Thank you for telling me. Now I know how to say it. Like the movie, Jew Man Jai. Okay. Jew Man Jai. <laughs> I could <can> say it. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Okay, Scott 8. Uh, Coachella is a concert in Palm Desert. Well, I didn't know that. And I will not be going there. I can guarantee you that. I won't be going out in the... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Anthony tells me that Jumanji... What is uh, Jumanji? Okay, Jumanji. <laughs> Jumanji. Good movies, both of them. Did I ever meet uh, uh, Saint, uh, Saint for Life? Uh, did I ever meet Johnny Roselli? Yes, I did. I didn't know it was Johnny Roselli at the time. 1968, uh, Jimmy Katura sent me out. I wrote about it in my book. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jimmy Couture sent me out to Las Vegas and the trip was all paid on him, told me to drive and not to take a plane, not to get any tickets, not to be noticed and to pick up a package for him. And he also told me to uh, buy him some shoes. And so I did. And while I was sitting around, um, after I'd been gambling for a while, I was playing blackjack. Uh, there was a man that came over and sat down at my booth while I was getting something to eat. And he told me that um, we had a mutual friend, the guy with the shoes. And that meant Jimmy. And so Jimmy Couture. So um, he told me when I checked out that there'd be a bag waiting for me just not to stop with it, whatever. I followed instructions and brought the bag back and Why was Jimmy Couture killed? Um, you mean murdered? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he wouldn't retire. Uh, Jimmy was told to retire so many times, it was pathetic. He, had, he was. It was a war from the chop shops. I mean, he had the chop shops going. Many things were going his way. However, uh, there was a big struggle over it between different factions of the Chicago Rights group. And Jimmy just, one time he, he went out, he bought a house in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it was a beautiful mansion. And I thought he was going to move there, but he just never moved. Hmm. 
Johnny was killed in Florida while staying with his daughter. It's kind of sad. Scott H. Well, I don't know. Was Albert Taco, Alan, you want to know if Albert Taco, Alan Taco, or excuse me, Albert Taco was behind it? I don't know if he was behind it or not, because Jimmy was killed at Ogden and Hubbard. And the people that did the job were part of the Grand Avenue crew. Bobby Bag of Donuts. Red, did I know any of the junkyards in Chicago that were connected or controlled by the outfit? Almost all of them. Almost every one. Oh, I used to get parts there. Genetic memory uh, farms. Uh, been looking around Joliet for people who knew Molly Zeko. Zelko uh, drove from her apartment um, to her likely grave on Stryker. Can you tell us about? No, I really can't. I don't know anything about the 1950s at all. I didn't live through it, so I really can't tell you about it, guy, which I could. Hey, James, how you doing, buddy? If the boys told me to retire, they wouldn't have to tell me twice. Yeah, that was my, that's exactly. I mean, they told him not only twice, they kidnapped him, brought him up to Wisconsin, tried to cool him out, and he still didn't retire. So I don't think it would go that way for me. They wouldn't have to take it. Don't think twice. It's all right. I'm gone. That's the end of it. Alpha boss. Chuck and Nicoletti, Sam Giancani, Roselli were all killed around the same time. Alpha boss, wasn't that a coincidence? I don't think it was a coincidence. I think it was planned that way. I really do. I always have. Those are my own personal thoughts. They have nothing to do with any documentary or anything else. But they, were all, they all had to do something with um, the McClellan Committee some state Senate committee that was investigating uh, the JFK murder. Scott H. Was Tony part of the, in the Grand Avenue? I don't know if he was in it. He was part of it, though. His superior was Joey Lombardo, J.L. Hey, Big Tuna, how you doing? Fred, did the Alpha bosses ever treat Marshall different because of his boy, Johnny Rogers? No, they did not. But they treated John, Johnny Rogers different. They didn't like him. They didn't like him at all. Uh, also, did anyone suspect Marshall of being gay? If they did, they never brought it up. It was not ever brought up to me. I was kind of shocked by some of the comments that went around. I knew Rogers was kind of different, but uh, Marshall didn't seem to be different at all. John O., do you think uh, their own internal killings did as much to the eventual downfall in the reduction of size? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I really do. You start killing off one leader, another leader, and if there is a... It just and then the government took him out too, so it was like that. How did the alpha get away from the IRS real estate holdings? Uh, they didn't, as a matter of fact, 90% of them got hit with uh, uh, IRS problems. It was really, bad, really, really rough for them, all of them. Tony Spalaccio, even Tony Accardo. Had IRS problems, Mo. That's the way it was. I I don't think any of the uh, IRS CID worked hand in hand with Strike Force. No, Alan, I did not go to Marshall's funeral. Marshall died 
way after I left Chicago. I left Chicago on September 15, 1988. Frank Ferrero, you have a good evening, too. I'll see you Wednesday. God bless you, guy. Tommy Bridges, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Red, do you think that Chucky Nicoletti and John Roselli were some of the shooters and JFK? I don't think Johnny Roselli was a shooter. I pretty much believe Chucky Nicoletti was. I've discussed that before. Death and taxes. You're right, Bill. They're inevitable. They happen. Dan, I. Uh, what do I think? Uh, you asking what I think about Arlington? Uh, Park race check uh, closing for good. Hmm. It's just like all of uh, the Chicago land. It's all changing, and it's not what I was. It what it was to me. I don't appreciate it that much. Roselli had a lot of influence, made a lot of money with the outfit. Yeah, but he, he certainly rocked a couple people's boats, I'll tell you that much. He went before the uh, uh, the Senate committee one time, and the second time when he was subpoenaed, I, that's the same thing with everybody else that we discussed a little bit before. Chicago Joe. Must have been nice to launder money in the 80s before the French came. <laughs> yeah, it was, I guess. <laughs> I knew a lot of people that did it. It was different back in the eighties. It was different back in the in the seventies. I mean, if anything's inevitable, it's called change. Change is inevitable. We're going to have change, no matter what. JW, greed killed Arlington Park. It's sad. Well, you know, real estate becomes prime. It becomes very prime, and and it changes things. Just for a second, maybe a little bit off topic here, but um, I remember um, I remember way way back in Chicago when people had lakefront property, and they built big high rises on it. And they thought they had lakefront property. So the, the high rises went for more. I mean, the, the condos in them, the apartments in them, they went for a lot of money. Then they started filling in the lake. They had all this stuff coming in from Lamont Quarries, and it was being dumped in the lake. And they went out another 90 feet, and they put another road in there. And guess what? Now there was new lakefront property. All those people got cheated out of it. They spent a fortune. Joseph, how you doing? Uh, do I know anything about Ross Pyro? No, I really don't. I really don't, Joe. I don't know anything about him. Way after my time. Well, Moose, how you doing, buddy? You missed the beginning. What does really do? I don't really know what he did. I don't know what he did. Red, did you know Alan Glick's deceased? Uh, yeah, I, I, I did. Uh, he died of cancer in August 21. Do you remember that last time you saw Tony Spalaccio live? Did you... Go to the Waker funeral, James Chan. Um, the last time I saw him alive was he had surgery. I didn't see him then. The last time I saw him alive was in, 
a year and a half before he uh, before he died or was murdered. And uh, several people told me not to go to the funeral. And uh, I didn't go. I was told not to. I didn't like it. Bob Conran went anyway. Bob Conran didn't have to live with people. He was a movie star, you know, so he could do what he wanted. I respected him for that. really did. Digital, uh, genetic memory forms. Uh, digital technology has just changed the landscape and how we conduct our business. The street is also online, and that's where the money is. But it requires a different set of skill to be unnoticed. You're absolutely correct. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. Alpha boss. Hey, Red, why, why did Joe Lombardo shake down more shaker? Um, I don't know how much you know about this, but uh, more shaker had taken a loan from Jimmy Hoffa uh, for a casino. And there was a referral fee, you know, like for handling it. And Morris was an attorney. And so uh, that money was Teamster money. And Joey went to him and or called him on the phone. And uh, I believe the comedy made is if you want to live to be one year older, uh, you're going to give up that money. And uh, the money was really part of the Vegas skim. And so Joey Lombardo thought it was owed. And Alan had been trying to collect it. Alan Dorfman trying to collect his little piece of the pie. And he couldn't collect it alone. So Joey called him to remind him that Alan's not just a meek guy. We're not meek. We do things for cheaper than that in Chicago. Uh, Mark Rover, what would have happened to you if you went to the funeral? I have no idea. And I didn't want to know at the time. I really didn't. Sorry, Mark. I can't help you with that one. Red, do I keep in touch with any of my crew? I didn't have a crew, and I wasn't really part of a crew. I didn't go out and work on things and steal and rob and things like that. I handled things differently, and I did other types of businesses. Um, and I was well respected for it, too. Uh, do I keep in touch with them? I don't think there's anybody left that I even worked with at the time. All those people are gone. They've all passed away. That's okay, guy. If you're driving, just be careful. Don't get in an accident. Alan, be careful. Don't get in an accident, buddy. Thanks for tuning in while you're driving. I think this is a funny question. Mark, Mark Rover, I have no idea. I did not see it. I did not hear anybody talk about it other than the fact he exposed it. And the truth of the matter is I really didn't have any – He. Really, I just didn't have any uh, information to help you with on that one. Tony always had the best technology, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He had uh, Joseph uh, Brennan Jr. He had uh, Tony Pelicano provided for him. He was a client of Tony Pelicano's, and he knew Tony. Tony both Tonys knew each other. Quite well. Tony Pelicano knew just about everybody. And he hired him to get him the best equipment. And he had the best equipment.
Homan Sanders read, was the earning potential better than nowadays? I guess it was, uh, because that's why there is no structure and no mob. You're very welcome, Joseph. You're very welcome. Hey, we have Brian Glade saying hi to Anthony. Steve uh, Pape. Pape? I know a police officer by the name of Pape. Joe Pape. Hey, Red. Uh, Deputy Sheriff. Hey, Red, do you know or have any have met any of the current bosses of the Chicago outfit? Uh, thanks, Red. God bless. I don't think there is any bosses, Steve. I mean, who reports to who? I really don't. I mean, who runs to somebody else and says, okay, I'll pay you tribute or um, there is no, I, I don't see it. If it's there, they're really hiding it. Most of the people, there are no bosses anymore that I know of. I mean, I don't know any boss. Uh, Sal? He's retired. He's an old man. He doesn't want to be bothered. Brian Glade. Did you know any mobsters' houses that had secret doors or tunnels? Um, no. No, I didn't. Uh, most of the guys that I knew... Uh, yeah, I did one. I knew one. I knew one that had a secret uh, escape hatch, kind of. But um, most of the guys I knew, if they were arrested or something like that, the first thing they did was ask for their lawyer. That was it. They're very professional about it. They're very, very mm -hmm. professional. Hey, Mickey, how you doing? Hey there, buddy. Well, I've seen people, Will Moves, did I, I've seen people uh, saying online that Albert Vienna is the current boss. No idea if he is. Is there any re, uh, reality to that, though? I've heard the same things, but I don't know what kind of crew he's got. If he does, he's not making his presence known to the public. Yes, he was known as Albie the Fiac, uh, Falcon. I met Albie when he was like maybe 20, 21, 22 years old. He used to run around in the uh, with other young toughs that were in the neighborhood, uh, the Grand Anag neighborhood, and at nighttime. And I had pulled into the uh, – I, I was going to see uh, uh, Jimmy Kozo's father-in-law. And I pulled into the alley. And when I did, they blocked me in from the front and the back. And we're all young guys. And, and they came out with baseball bats. And I rolled my window down. As soon as they saw me, they said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm going to see Jimmy Boy. And he said, that's okay. That's red. Let him go. And that was the end of that. That was many, many years ago. AOL. Hey, Red, do you know the mob ever had involvement with Native American casinos or reservations, partially in the Midwest? No, I don't know anything about it. The only thing I do know is about uh, what happened uh, uh, when they tried to move in on the place in San Diego. That's interesting. You heard a story. They were laughing. <laughs> Bill Romer said that, huh? Okay.
Good chat, guys. Uh, Frank Jr. stole around 800 grand from, from his father. Yes, he did, Scott H. He did. Thank you. Thank you, Will. It is an interesting Albie story. I did it on a bedtime story. It's on video. I put it up like maybe 2016. Um, it's kind of interesting. Did you guys know the Seminole Indians on the Hard Rock Casino Empire? Um, I did. <laughs> I was very interested in the first Hard Rock Casino Cafe. And there was a, it was down right off of uh, what they call, I forget what they called it down there. Um, it was a road that went from the East Coast to the West Coast of Florida. And uh, they had an Indian, Indian res reservation down there. No, Pam, I don't. Pam, Pam Rudnick says, Red, do you still do bedtime stories? No, Pam, I don't. Uh, the reason I don't do bedtime stories is I'm doing live. And that way it's easier. Um, you people can tell me what you want to hear about. And I will try and uh, give you the stories you want. Sometimes you may not want the stories that I've already pre-recorded. Did I ever meet Harry Ailman? Uh, Brian, uh, have I ever met or seen Harry Ailman? And if so, was it scary? The only time I saw Harry Ailman was on the roof of uh, a Rosie Sandwich Shop uh, when the day Richard King was murdered, the morning he was murdered. I was driving down Grand Avenue going east, and uh, Frank Schweiss was outside. He had a handheld radio. And Harry was on the roof, and that's the only time I ever saw him. Never met him. Don't know, don't know what's going on in his life, or didn't know what's going on in his life. I'm looking through your comments, and I've heard, uh, Brian says tuna. I've heard of it. Used to go. I used to live close to the springs. I, I assume you mean Palm Springs. Yes, I. I know. I know Scott H. I know that Harry's daughter wrote a book. It's called "They Can't Hurt Him Anymore," and he was a kind, nice, loving father. Um, to a certain degree, maybe she looked beyond that and saw different things. But even she describes in her own book how he got up and went to the door and beat the heck out of some guy because he put a scratch in the car. I mean, he wasn't that that nice and loving. He may have come back and sat down at the table and said, okay, folks, let's eat. But uh, she had a good idea what he did and what he was. That's my opinion. Bobby Bank of Donuts, how did Tony Spilaccio ever end up with Oscar Goodman? Oscar Goodman was the best attorney in town. That's how he wound up with him, because Tony liked the best, the best of everything, the best scotch, the finest women, and a fine attorney. Mo, Red, how goes it back from Spain? Feeling wonderful? Need to break after COVID going back September. I'll bet you do, buddy. Homer Sanders, Tony was a solid friend to, for, to you even. Yes, he was, Homer. He was a solid friend of mine. He was a very close friend of mine. He went to the grave without giving up a secret. And we really didn't even call it a secret. It was trust. We just trusted each other. And we had no reason to hurt each other either. Mickey Griggs. Hey, Red, if you ever need help controlling the riffraff, 
and it gets bad, I'll be glad to accept a wrench to help you, help you, buddy. Expect, expect a wrench to help you, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get that bad. Bill Kirschmeyer, a true friend, is someone that knows all about you but likes you anyway. You know, Bill, you're right. Um, and I didn't really know all about him. I didn't find out about all his murders or even some of the ones that have brought to light until after I wrote the book and a lot of things. I mean, it was later. It was really later. Well, Moose, did I know Frank Collado? Did, did, well, Moose says, did you know Frank Collada personally, seeing as he was good friends with the ant? Um, no, I never met Frank Collada. He went out to Las Vegas in like 78, 79, and more like 79, and I never knew him, uh, even though he was part of the same crew. He was, he didn't come around. He didn't hang out with those guys. He didn't hang around. He was doing his own thing. Robert, how you doing, guy? I haven't seen you here before. Uh, besides Milvon, what else was Irv Weiner into? Well, he was really into the skim. Uh, they had... This is one thing that I know that he was into. They had uh, got a finder's fee, and it was $1.4 million. Tony got a big piece of it, and they sent him out to Vegas. Uh, and the the idea was uh, he was going to watch the skim, and but he was involved with uh, um, a pail factory in Deming, New Mexico, and a plastic pail factory. And he was also involved, Irv was, in, um, he had a big 707 for flying around back and forth. Um, a company called Weenie World, which has become something of interest lately because uh, Danny Seaford actually worked for Irv Weiner building these uh, hot dog wagons, which they, which they call Weenie World was the name of the company. But they were actually... Uh, um, moving or laundering money through the, that business. Another business that Irv was in was the um, welfare business. He had welfare, he had uh, clinics, medical clinics set up all over Chicago, all over. And uh, he was collecting millions and millions and millions of dollars. He wasn't a doctor, he hired doctors. Thank you, Homan. Hit that like button. Get me out there. Thank you, Herman. I appreciate it, buddy. Bobby Bag of Donuts. Did I ever hear of a guy named Joe D. Silvesto? D. Silvesto? Um, no. I really haven't. I really haven't. Yes, Brian Glade. Irv was right next to um, to Dorfman when he was whacked at the parking lot. Uh, Schweik, Frank Schweiss did that murder. Um, and Irv just was, Irv knew Frank quite well. And he was the one that led the lamb to the slaughter, so to speak. Scott H., the winner, sold wieners and called it Weenie World. So there's a theme there. I thought it was kind of odd, the name Weenie World, but they were hot dog wagons, you know, where they were vendors. You pulled them with a trailer. They were very interesting. Kurt Hansen had one. As a matter of fact, he had two or three, he sold several of them. He worked very close with Irv. The 
Joseph Brennan Jr. Red, aren't you going to going on Joey Seifert's podcast? I look forward to that if you, if it's the case. Yes, I spoke to Joey about it. he's waiting for Paul Wickham to come back from Las Vegas. Paul is out in Las Vegas, and uh, hey, there we have it. You'll know the story soon. How you doing? How you doing? That that's our that that's Adam from my vlog. Have a great show today. Tour time. You, you're out. He's out doing the tours, guys. Adam's always doing it. Dupe, Dupe explained 101. Where's Dr. Patrick's dental office? I'm not really sure. He lived in Park Ridge, but I'm not really sure where his office was. Okay, Anthony, you're right. I never, I never, uh, <laughs> I never go to lunch with Herb Weiner. I did go to lunch with Herb Weiner many, many times. I, uh, I did a bedtime story about uh, uh, meeting uh, Irv and Tony Spalacho over at uh, a place in, uh, this is before he was sent out to Las Vegas. The two were inseparable when they, I mean, they were always hanging out together, always, Irv and Tony. But uh, I got pulled over by a police officer, and it's a whole different story. But... Uh, we went to lunch together. As far as Sam, I didn't know me at Sam. I mean, they call me at Sam, but I just called him Sammy D. Sammy D. Stefano. Uh, I don't think I would ever take anything from any of those people. And I'd be suspect in being in one of their restaurants and eating there or drinking there. I just, I wouldn't do it. A very good question, John. I I never I never felt nervous around Joey Lombardo. I never felt uh, like my life was in danger or anything else. Joey treated me. He put his arm on my shoulder and just talked to me. Or if he's looking at me, he he blow smoke. He he smoked these cigars and he used to blow rings like a Cheshire cat. And uh, I even made fun of him one time for for saying that. That's one thing I want to clear up, guys, uh, during this broadcast, is that um, I saw people different sides of them. So many times I've, I've watched different interviews with different people, and they said, oh, I saw death in that man's eyes. Every time I looked at him, I saw death in his eyes. And it might have been this guy or that guy or whatever. The truth of the matter is maybe that's because you were doing things that were sneaky and wrong because all the bosses I talked to, I didn't see death in their eyes. I usually saw kindness, something warm. It was different, a lot different. Ryan Brown. Hope all is well. Recently saw an episode of Discovery Channel with you talking about the outfit. Boy, I did that a long time. They still keep trying to get a lot of mileage out of that guy, Ryan. Yeah, I did that a long time ago. That was done in 2008, I believe, 2009. And they sure get a lot of mileage on that. Every time somebody, it's airs where somebody watches it, friends of mine call me and say, hey, Red, you're on TV. And I think that's so neat when it happens. It's kind of funny. Thank you for bringing it up, Ryan. I haven't seen that footage for years. It's been cut up into so many pieces, it's pathetic. That was about an eight and a half hour interview, and they just cut splices out back and forth. Thank you for bringing it up, Ryan. Exactly, exactly right, Scott H. If you're not doing something wrong, you don't have to be paranoid.
How you doing, White Hawk? I don't know who you are except for your name, White Hawk, and I don't know what you're trying to tell us. Yes, Alan uh, uh, Pat Splasho died on the 25th of April, 2022. And you can look it up on the internet and just type his name in, uh, Patrick Spalaccio, and it will tell you that arrangements are being made either tomorrow for his funeral or wake. And those there'll be several memorial services. It's a wonderful piece about him on the internet. It really talks about his family, his grand, his children, his grandchildren, and his great grandchildren. And also what it talks about is, um, uh, his other family that wasn't blood related to him, but he treated him like family. I thought that was a very nice note. Hey, Red, out of all the main guys in the outfit, how many of you disliked and the mo wait a second back up here? Big tune 815, Red, out of all the outfit made guys in the outfit. Out of all the made guys in the outfit, guys, we got guys, guys, who may have disliked you the most and why? Uh, I think the guy that didn't like me most was Mike Galitta. And Mike Galitta was a made guy. Uh, why? Because he couldn't muscle me. He tried to muscle me, and uh, it didn't work out. He was part of the old guard, and he went back to the days of Capone. But uh, Joey Lombardo went and paid him a visit. And when Joey paid him a visit, it doesn't matter your age. It matters your rank. And he ranked above him. He straightened him out. I used to believe the same thing, Bill. To, to survive and prosper, most of the day, I was six cents of a dog. I used to think about that. Now, this is a weird question, Brian. Brian Glade, have I ever eaten a frog? Is my voice that bad? No, I've never eaten a frog. Sorry, guy. I'm not into frogs. Now, some of my neighbors like to go geeking. Brian Brown. Also, Red, I noticed a mistake in the show where the narrator was speaking about Tony Acaro, speaking about the Senate uh, taking the fifth, but it clearly was footage of Joey Yufa. Yeah, that's the editors. Uh, that's what they did in that show. I believe you probably saw it on A&E or the History Channel, one of the two. But they splice pieces in there. So I actually have a picture on Facebook about that, Ryan. It's a picture of me and it's in silhouette. And it says, Red We Met uh, Mob Associate. And it's a, it's a clip from the film, the picture itself, the photograph. Sean Pender, you like frog legs. Frog legs are okay, but I haven't eaten frogs. I've had frog legs before many times. Bill Kirschmeyer, accuracy and television are <laughs> mutually exclusive. Uh, yeah, kind of. Robert, the first time I've ever seen you too, Robert. Welcome. Um, did the IBI or Chicago Crime Commission like a Romer or any other enforcement agency? Did it try to get into the mob from you? I assume, I assume you mean from me. And uh, no, the Chicago Crime Commission, there was a retired FBI agent that went to Chicago Crime Commission and uh, or Cook County Crime Commission. And he said, you're going to work for me now. You're going to give us all the information we want. And I reported him to the FBI. 
He was a retired FBI agent. He was immediately replaced and he lost his pension. Hope that answers your question, Bob. Joseph Brennan Jr., I worked with someone who told me about Stephen the Rifleman, Winter Hill Gang in Boston. I really wanted to be his friend. Did you know about it? No, I didn't, Joe. Sorry. Don't know much about Boston, guys. Well, here we go. That, that hour went fast. It really went fast. So I want you guys to have a wonderful week. And thank you so much for stopping by. If you can, hit that like button and subscribe. Love you guys. I'm out. God bless you.